Alright. The chapter ends with Kurtapika about to go off against the other guards. Huh. So, I'm just going to throw out my suspicions here, and I'm going to assume it's the baby. I, I just got to go on a limb here and say that, because, look, last week's chapter, we end off with a cliffhanger with some form of aura coming out of the baby's direction, and we do know that there is Nimbis that all the princes have, and we don't know the, a lot about these Nimbis, but we do know that Nimbis are completely separate entities from the actual host. They can do whatever they want. We do know about this. We do know that Nimbeast can do whatever they want. They don't have to listen to the host body. We know about this. That was said in the past when they were first introduced. So I'm willing to bet, since the baby has gotten a Nimbeast, I'm willing to bet the Nimbeast is probably what is causing all havoc, probably attacking everyone. Maybe it's, you know, doing something to protect the mother or protect itself. I have no idea. But I'm willing to bet whatever's causing the problems going on here throughout this chapter, it's probably the baby's Nimbeast. Now, judging by the way it looks, it looks like some form of, I guess, Nin is being used to suck out the blood and all the innards from someone's body. And I'm like, yo, that, that's pretty fucking creepy. Because it looks like everybody's just dehydrated. And even at the beginning of this chapter, when we first see the first body, you have it to where it was said to describe the body, the body looked like it was wood, like it was woody. So it seemed like the body literally was just petrified. It had everything sucked out of it, and there was like no, I guess, liquid left inside of it at all. It was just completely drained of everything, dehydrated. So it raises many questions exactly what caused this but personally I know many might be throwing out that it might be the phantom trope but I don't believe so I, I highly doubt that it's probably the phantom trope that is causing this entire ordeal in this chapter I, I doubt it I really do I believe when they'll probably start making their move they'll probably start making their move around when they get in the in-between point to when the ship stops to have the relay point and when they're going to be exchanging to go to the actual fake continent. I feel like that's when the Phantom Trope most likely will be attacking and initiating any plans they have. But for now though, I truly believe it's probably the baby causing everything. And I mean, we do know the Nimbeast is invisible to the majority of people. And we do know that Kurapika was able to actually sense it somewhat. We don't know necessarily if he could see it, but he could sense it. We saw the aura popping out last week. So, a lot of questions are raised with this chapter. But anyways, getting off of that, my boy Liliorio, he actually pops up in this chapter. Now, many might have missed that, but if you go to page 8, you see Liliorio in the medical center to where he's helping people out, you know, gathering medical supplies and all that. You, you just see him actually helping out. So, my boy Liliorio, he's actually helping out, he's being a doctor, and I'm really glad to see that because I mean hey I have missed my Leorio so much because I love the Chimera Antarch don't get me wrong I love the Chimera Antarch it's my favorite arc of the series but I really love Leorio I really love Kurapika I love both of these characters and I'm so glad we're gonna have you know more focus on these two characters in this upcoming Dark Continent arc because I missed them I missed them so much and seeing Leorio now having Nin abilities and how he can use it and how he's gonna be helping out out now I just there's a really good time for him to shine with his character especially with him being a doctor there's just so much room for character development for his character and also Kurapika and also the phantom trope popping up it adds more layers to the character development that Kurapika most likely can get so I'm really excited I'm really glad to see him in this chapter I know it got a little bit off topic right there but I'm really glad to see Leorio in this chapter and helping out because that means he will be beneficial to this arc okay so talking about the situation here that's going on with the Dark Continent to the fake Dark Continent, let, let's look at the details we know so far. As we know is that majority of the populace that's on the ship, they're going to be having their goal on the fake Dark Continent. Now everybody believes that, you know, the continent that they're going to is actually the real Dark Continent. But in actual all reality, it's not really the Dark Continent. It's just an island or a little small continent outside of the normal border of the human world and it's in slightly of a dangerous area it is but it's not as dangerous as actually going to the dark continent and so majority of the public is going to be going to this island and as we know beyond and everybody else they kind of did a public display to where they would get more people on board to go to this dark continent for beyond could actually go to the real dark continent. It was like, you know, I guess a, p a political stunt. That That's the best way to summarize it of why everybody is going to this island, but also they don't know the truth because it was beyond manipulating, you know, politics and stuff where he could get to the main island, but he has to be imprisoned. So, beyond. 
he's getting guarded by three Zodiacs. And as we know, one of the Zodiacs that is currently guarding beyond is a traitor. We already know this. Now, many of you might have forgotten because, you know, it's been a very long time since we saw the previous chapters before the big hiatus we got. If you remember, one of the Zodiacs are a traitor. The Zodiac that's a traitor is in that room with beyond right now, and the other two are there just watching the situation out. And, you know, when something goes wrong, you know, Mizai and Kropika are going to step in, and they're going to, you know, deal with the traitor. But for now, though, it's pretty interesting to know that there's three Zodiacs actually watching over Beyond. That goes to show you how profile, you know, he is. Like, you know, how many are going to be protecting him and how some of the personnel that could be used in the other floors and decks are not going to be there because they need to keep watch over Beyond. And as you know, there's a traitor amongst the Zodiacs. So because of this, you know for a fact that's technically just, you know, Beyond and a Zodiac versus the two other Zodiacs in that room when shit starts hitting the fan. Apparently, majority of the populace, they're going to be stopping at a relay point. It's like where the human world boundary ends, and they're going to be, you know, getting ready to refuel and stuff. And then once they refuel and all that is ready, they're going to be moving over into the fake dark continent. And then once that is done, everybody settles down to kind of, you make this area livable for, you know, a new populace can actually live on this new continent. Majority of the main top members that were promised to go to the real dark continent are going to be going. For instance, you have a door, probably the phantom trope might be joining along. Hisuka's probably going to follow them as well. We know, you know, Kurapika, we know Beyond, we know the Zodiacs, we know Leorio. We know a bunch of the main cast, the big key players, are going to be playing a part in going into the Dark Continent. But the big thing here is, once the, you know, I guess the fake continent gets here and all that, and the, you know, the main princes and all that are going to be settling right there, the main question pops up. Does that mean that the story of, like, the princes and stuff, does that end there, or will some of the princes also journey with them to the Dark Continent? I'm curious about that, because I'm willing to bet since Nin Beasts were introduced, there's probably going to be a lot more, I guess, valuable reasons to use these characters in the future, not just for this arc, but later on down the road, maybe for the Dark Continent. Because, like I said, I believe that baby is probably going to be something of a very big powerhouse. That baby is going to be a powerhouse, especially with the Nin Beast, and if I know anything from anime or manga, you never underestimate old people, you never underestimate babies, that baby's probably badass as fuck. So, that baby's probably gonna be helping out in the Dark Continent, I can already see it now, or that baby's gonna be a potential main villain, who the fuck knows, I mean, it, it's, it, I've seen it before, I, I've seen babies become villains, I, I'm not joking, I mean, if you've ever watched, you know, or read or watched Inuyasha, you know what I'm talking about. So, I mean, I've seen it done before, it's not something brand new, I can see the baby being a very good asset to the team, or something very evil. The food for thought. Anyways, the main course, the journey that's going on right now, there, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, because, like I said, the, you have it where the phantom trope is on the ship, they're there to hunt down some certain items, and that is going to be a problem, because when Kurapika finds out about this, that's going to derail the entire mission. It, it, it instantly will. When Kurapika finds out that the spiders are there, and, you know, he finds out that Kuro has actual Nin back again, and he's not, you know, powerless, He's going to step in. He's going to step in. He's going to try to settle this grudge. And we know Kuro, he's pretty damn powerful. We already seen what he did to Hisuka. We, we already saw that. We know Hisuka is going to be joining in as well. And Hisuka is kind of a man at this moment that will not hold back at all. He will kill his target and will not let them know. So there is a potential for Kurapika to be on that table of the chopping block. So I'm kind of fearful for Kurpika to be killed as well, maybe even Leorio too. So there's a lot of bad things that can go wrong rather quickly. And we do know Mizai, he put himself in his own death lag in last week's chapter because he's going to be separated from everyone else and he's down in the lower decks. And there's no way to really get up in the higher decks because of the situation where you can't move up to deck 3 to deck 2. It's just not a possibility. So because of this... You know, Mizai at this moment is kind of stuck down there, probably with the Phantom Trope, blending in, doing some crazy shit, starting problems and stuff, probably like that, and I can see where that can get rather bad quickly. Now, overall, though, the chapter gives us exposition, a lot of details, and Togashi-like style, and I'm really satisfied and excited to see what happens next, because, I mean, this chapter was freaking fun. I mean, it builds up a lot of tension, and that's what Togashi does best. He always does good tension when it comes to his series. That's one of the best things I think I loved about Hunter x Hunter when I was watching the anime, was the tension that is... I guess you get from watching or even reading, you get this tension building up because you know there's these lingering issues that are in the background that can strike at any moment against our characters. Speaking of striking at our characters, Pariston, oh, 
I'm surprised I'm mentioning him. And you know, as I've said before, I love Fariston. I know he's an asshole. I know he's a dick. I know he's someone you should fucking hate. I know. Fariston is not a nice guy at all. But I like his character. And Pariston is mentioned in this chapter. A very rare name, because it's been a while since I've heard his name actually mentioned. And I miss him from, you know, watching, you know, the election arc. I, I really miss him. I also miss him in the recent chapters that were revealed. Or, you know, we get to see him in the chapters with, you know, Jin. I I'm glad to see him, you know, mentioned once again. And Pariston, he is the one that hired these hunters, as we can clearly see. We already know. And these hunters have not been briefed at all about the selection or the, the war between the princes. None of the, you know, hunters that were hired or whatever, and they're a part of the guard right now, have been notified whatsoever. Which, that is very fucking dangerous. And Kurapika goes along the lines of saying that Pariston, since he didn't notify them about the selection and who's going to be the next prince, that means that most likely Pariston doesn't know about it as well. And I'm thinking like, oh, Kurapika. You, you, you just you do not know you do not know Pariston. You you don't know his character. He's a man that just likes to watch the world burn. He, that that's how he is. He likes chaos. So obviously Pariston knows. He he's a character that knows a lot. He knows a lot of shit that's going on. And I'm willing to bet you that he knows about the selection war. We know he's connected to everything and all that. We know he's connected to the Dark Continent. So there's a possibility he knows. And he just didn't fill them in because he wants shit to start happening. He wants chaos to start happening, people to die and all that. Because that's Pariston. That, that's just how he is. So I could see stuff like that happening. Kurpika definitely underestimating Pariston because he definitely has a twisted personality. And Kurpika doesn't even know the half of it. He doesn't even know what type of person he's dealing with. And who would, you know, kind of be happy enough to send these people to die. Kurpika has no idea at all what type of person Pariston is. So that's about it when it comes to this chapter. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.